the president's newfound confidence in trying to tackle the country's rising crime surge head on as opposed to playing defense is a new approach and one that attacks issues voters have graded him poorly. Polling from this summer shows that most Americans prefer Republicans to handle the issue of crime by a margin of 13 points to Democrats. Another poll just out this month shows crime as Democrats' worst tested issue, with only 21% of voters saying they want the president's party to take on criminal policy. Dr. Lauren Wright joins me now, associate research scholar and lecturer of, in politics and public affairs at Princeton University. Lauren, thanks for joining me. Hi, Chris. Good to be with you. So, uh, Lauren, the GOP has really seized on the increase in U.S. murders, even though 30 percent of them are even though 30 percent of that happened during Trump's presidency, as well as the defunded police rhetoric and the criminal justice reform policies pursued by very unpopular progressive prosecutors like Chase Bowden, who was recalled in San Francisco. The Republicans have the narrative advantage on this, don't they? So what's Biden's move here? They do. I mean, that's a really good point. And what I found so interesting about Biden's speech today was that he wouldn't even have to have fun the police as a slogan if his fellow Democrats on the progressive wing did not create the defund the police movement and in some cases weren't still defending it, like members of the squad who double down many times. And so I do think it's very smart for the president to get ahead of this. But in some ways, as a political scientist watching this, it's just fascinating that this is sort of an issue created by his own party that is now weighing him down. And he does have to have an aggressive strategy. So, you know, we see that that strategy was working earlier in the Biden administration with Republicans winning some special elections and even some local elections. But when you look at what happened last week in New York 19, where the Democrat was attacked on those issues and it didn't seem to work. Is it still a winning strategy for Republicans or is this something they got to consider adjusting, especially with Biden and the Democrats going on offense? Well, it is still traditionally and historically has been an issue that Republicans are perceived as stronger on. So is uh, foreign policy and homeland security. So is the economy sometimes there aren't a lot of reasons for these things if we look at current events, but that tends to be what the research shows. And yes, I do think that this is going to be a top issue for voters. Uh, Pew just came out with a survey of most important issues for voters, or rather issues that are most concerning for voters, and it's the economy. And then right below that is gun violence and crime. And so yep. any politician, regardless of party, has to have a handle on this and must have a message. But I'll just say really quickly, Chris, I think some of the recent Democratic victories are reflective of uh, some Democratic successes nationwide. I mean, Republicans had a great situation heading into the midterms, and they're doing a lot of things to make sure they don't get the Senate back when that looked likely just a few weeks ago. So Biden likes to use the term gun violence as opposed to crime or gun crime. Is that a benefit to him? Is that does that put the uh, the, the problem back into the GOP court? That's a good question. I mean, that's a testable question. I'd love to see a survey experiment that taps into that sort of thing. Um, usually people don't respond that strongly from a, a very small change in words. But uh, but that's that's a great question and something Democrats should look into. How do you expect Republicans to respond to the president going on the offense with this? I was just thinking about this earlier, Chris. I think they're going to say how hypocritical, look at this, you know, look at the Democratic run cities, look at the leadership and look at the policies. And of course, it's their responsibility. But, you know, they have been saying those things for a very long time and would say them regardless of um, if what was happening in the political environment. And so, you know, Democrats, I think, do have some advantages. Uh, certainly repealing Roe v. Wade is not a popular decision with the majority of Americans. They can lean into that. Um, and as long, frankly, as Donald Trump is around, that's bad for Republicans, too. I think one of the most fascinating stories has been how the GOP leadership has refused to condemn him, even though uh, he's really dragging Republicans down heading into the midterm. Yep. So, you know, there's new polling that shows four in 10 Americans think a civil war is coming. Ramped up rhetoric, crime. Now, look, I, I don't know who we'd fight in the civil war. Am I going to attack my mother at Thanksgiving? 
Uh, but how does this rhetoric play? And is it, Bi is it Biden's responsibility to quell it or does it belong with others? So I tend to think these numbers are vastly overblown. And so, and that type of poll result really contradicts something that we've known about Americans for decades, which is that they have little to no interest in politics. And right. we don't even vote, a lot of us, 66% in a general election, 55% in a midterm. We're at the very bottom of the list of developed democratic countries as far as turnout. And so you have to care about politics to get into a civil war. And I don't think it's helpful when we extrapolate from these surveys that sometimes have a lot of problems in how they were run in the first place. Yeah, I think it's just ramped up conflict in the media more than anything else. I don't really think a civil war is coming. Let me ask you another question on a different topic. Hunter Biden's yeah. probe, the FBI agent that was responsible for it resigned, and there's evidence that Democrats in this case were getting favored. Do Americans have a good reason uh, you know, to, to, to question the FBI and what they're doing? How much of it is justified and whose fault is that? Well, Americans are very mistrustful of government institutions as a whole. And so I think one problem that partisans run into when they talk about the FBI or the DOJ and whether they trust it is, you know, depending on what those institutions are doing, Republicans and Democrats will perceive them differently. And we're talking about, um, you know, in the case of the DOJ, about 100,000 people that work for that agency. 35,000 people work for the FBI. And so it's a huge organization and it's very diverse. And so, yes, there are people in these organizations that will have political preferences, although um, that should not be the case whenever possible. So, you know, it's not a principled position to condemn the institution as a whole, depending on how the wind is blowing. And so, I think, you know, depending on what happens with the Hunter Biden case, Republicans could be singing a very different tune uh, very shortly. We just don't know what that outcome will be. So last question, Lauren, there's uh, Biden's got a primetime address coming on uh, Thursday. What do you expect him to be talking about? What should the American people be expecting? Well, I think since Donald Trump, again, has spent much of the last year recounting and re-reviewing this lie about him winning the 2020 election, that has given Biden a chance to keep talking about Republicans and Trump and the irresponsibility and the horror of January 6th. In general, you know, the farther away we get from a political event, no matter how um, catastrophic, uh, people tend to forget. But now with the January 6th hearings and Trump constantly going on the road, and he will do it again this weekend, and uh, trying to rehash the 2020 election, yeah. It's probably smart for Biden to respond and to talk about that and to say that uh, we are at risk of uh, slipping into an anti-democratic tendency, although, as we just noted, uh, some of that is overblown. Exactly. Dr. Lauren Wright, thanks for joining me. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.